Hello, my name is Matthew Celia. I'm from LightSail VR, and uh, today what I wanted to do is go through a couple of reasons why you might want to use Mocha VR on your next 360 video project. I started using Mocha VR because of the incredible power of their motion tracker, which makes complex tasks like stabilization, roto, and inserts in VR a lot easier. And they are releasing an update soon that adds support for stereoscopic workflows, which will make post-visual effects work as easy as working with monoscopic footage. This is huge. One of the most common tasks us immersive filmmakers do is paint out the tripod. Usually I take my footage, create a cube map and skybox, and then use Photoshop to do some content to wear fill, and that works great if you have a still image. But if you want to replace it with motion and stay in a single app, Mocha VR is way better. To do this, you use the Lens Undistort module to translate your echo rectangular into rectilinear projection, where you can aim your camera down and get an exact view of what your audience sees. From here, it's easy to layer in another shot, say from a GoPro, and apply a bit of mesh warping and color correction, and you're done. No round tripping needed. I also tend to use Mocha VR's Reorient modules to stabilize moving shots. I didn't want to use a large gimbal that I would have to paint out, so we just put a Zcam S1 on a monopod and we knew that we could deal with it in post. Mocha VR makes it really easy to stabilize if you can track something relatively stable on the horizon or elsewhere in your scene. However, I will say this does not work as well for shots where you can't get a consistent track or can't make out the horizon very well. But for this ocean stuff, it was a lifesaver and way faster than using After Effects camera or another piece of software to stabilize. Before I was introduced to Mocha VR, I had no idea how to replace a rover in a moving shot. By some sort of magical trickery, it's able to scan in the background and replace a tracked object. All you have to do to do this is track your background and make sure it's set to none, and then track what you want to remove. There's tons of great tutorials on Mocha's site as this is a very popular feature. Mocha VR fills in the pixels and the illumination modeling handles any light changing. A fair warning, however, it is not 100% perfect, and it does require a lot of compute power. The folks over at Mocha also have some amazing tutorials and tips about how to optimize and speed this up, so I would recommend watching those several times before jumping in. Another great feature of having Mocha VR's tracker available in 360 is the ability to attach and insert text that is locked to a particular feature on the screen. For example, these rocks. I can track them and apply some text that sits perfectly. Now I know that we are all familiar with the Project 2D effect, but keyframing and animating that by hand would take way longer, and probably wouldn't look as accurate. I really wish though that Mocha VR's insert tool would maintain the aspect ratio of the assets that I insert, but it's easy enough to use the surface tool to slide stuff and morph it into place, so I guess it's okay. What I'm most excited to dive in further with is the stereoscopic tools coming in Mocha 5.6. We're shooting a lot more stereo projects at LightSail VR now with cameras like the GoPro Odyssey, the Yi Halo, and the Kandao Obsidian. So having tools to make tasks like roto and insertions easier is great in 3D space. If you've never worked in stereo before, and to be honest, a lot of us haven't coming from traditional filmmaking, figuring out things like conversion depth and 3D space is a huge headache. And I was excited to see how Mocha has implemented their tracker to automatically track both eyes and place inserts in the correct 3D space. It is going to be a huge time saver and finally gives us the ability to work with 3D footage better in After Effects. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you get as much out of Mocha VR as I do.